Hello, everyone. Welcome to CoBuzz Live on Thursday. I'm David Solomon uh, with CoBuzz. And today, <coughs> pardon me, we've got a really fun show for you. We've got the the, the guys from Lindbrook, uh, specifically NAD and Blue Sound, um, all pretty much old friends of mine and uh, really interesting people. This company has... Um, has done some really, really uh, wonderful things over the last decade. They really, long before that, um, always a super, super respected brand. Uh, but in the last 10 years, these guys have just been on absolute fire. And we wanted to have them on the show to talk about uh, what is possibly the most popular streaming streaming service that... Uh, um, that uh, people have these days streaming high resolution audio which is the blue sound product we think it's just a fabulous fabulous product i've got it myself and use it every single day um but yeah really really cool company uh before we get started i should probably be on the right screen uh let me tell you a little bit about it coba as we've got up to 60 million tracks these days we started out if you remember uh we started out with about 40 million which is still a lot of tracks, right? But as things progress, we've added just more and more and more. And about 80% of the, uh, the, the music that we're getting these days is, uh, is in high resolution audio. When we started, uh, when we started just not long ago, you know, a couple of years ago, we were, we were at, you know, maybe, you know, 40% uh, or 50% uh, that we got in high res these days it's just almost everything that we're getting is in some high res format which is absolutely just wonderful for music lovers it's certainly it's certainly good for me and i'm glad you guys could all enjoy it as well we've got several tiers that we that we, you can uh, hop in with cobuzz um the first one is a 15 dollar tier in in which you can get uh, pretty much all of 70 million uh tracks in either full or high resolution. We don't do MP3. We dropped it uh, not long after we went live in the United States because, really, quite simply, there's just no reason for MP3. And you know, if you were the kind of person that um, you know that's what you like and and that's your thing, uh, there's so many other services that really specialize in MP3. Um, so you know, if that's the important thing to you. Uh, or, or if that's something that you don't mind or your casual listener, lots of other programs out there. We don't do it. Uh, we've got a service that really that caters to um, as close to studio or studio recordings as we can possibly get. So you can get that all for 15 bucks a month or if you pay annually, you get that for like 1250 a month. Um, that's not that far away from the guys that are just doing like just strict MP3. So all of a sudden, like within about the last year and a half, uh, Cobuzz has started becoming just an incredible deal, a, a, as it were. Um, the next uh, uh, level we've got is a family plan. And listen, this is the best way in the world to turn people on to high resolution music that don't really care because um, here's what's going to end up happening. You'll do the family plan. It's only $25 per month and don't even ask them if they like it better. But in six months or so, uh, let them listen to a few cuts on CoBuzz and then go back to one of the lesser services. And, and you'll be surprised how many people at that point can hear the difference because there is so much difference in low resolution and in high resolution or even standard resolution and high resolution. And that comes in the form of literally millions and millions of tiny details. You would never, you would never be able to hear any one of those details or any 10 of those details by themselves if, or the only thing. But literally, if you put these millions and millions of small details together, you do start hearing a a lot more into the music um, than you would uh, than you would normally. Um, we've also got a Sublime membership. This is my favorite membership only because it really allows you to do a couple of things. It allows you to support your artists, which we are all into that for the artists these days or really forever. Um, 
don't just stream their stuff, buy their albums, you know, buy their t-shirts. If you can't do any of that, uh, buy their music. We've got it available on CoBuzz. Almost so much of it is in, in high resolution that uh, just not long ago, you would have been paying huge money for these things, but we have got some incredible deals, especially if you're a Sublime member. Um, if you're just a person off the street, we're typically 15, 20% lower in downloads than uh, most any other service anyway. Like uh, I've, I've asked Nita to pull up uh, the Super Tramp album here. So this Super Tramp album, um, high res version if you're just someone off the street can buy this thing for $21 and you can just go to cobuzz.com and go into the store and be able to do that uh, but if you are a sublime member it's $10.49 so if you go for this sublime membership you can really see quite easily how after two or three downloads you've actually paid for the service itself so it's an incredible deal and we really like it because it supports your it, it, it supports your favorite artist in, in a way that they wouldn't be supported if you were just streaming, uh, if you were just streaming. And then probably my favorite section, and I always like to talk about this just a little bit, is our our partner section. We've got a, these are all on playlists and you'll find um, you'll find uh, just tons of fantastic manufacturers and and uh, society members that have got super super interesting uh playlists uh, uh on and uh nad is nad and blue sound is no uh, exception we just got uh an nad playlist yesterday and then i would uh, i would invite you guys to uh, go to our playlist section look under hi-fi uh, manufacturers and you will see them. Um, we're seven minutes into the show. I really didn't mean for this to take this long, but I'd like to introduce our our guest from NAD slash Blue Sound. This is the largest crowd I've ever had, so uh, I'll do my best to manage it. Uh, but we're still going to keep this as you know very conversational. Uh, one of the really cool things that we're going to do today is we're going to give away a Blue Sound Node 2i, uh, which should be really good for someone. But if you get this Node Sound 2i, you're also going to get a year free CoBuzz from us. So with that, I will introduce some people from NAD. Let's start off with uh, the uh, North American sales manager, uh, Stephen Baker. How you doing, Stephen? I'm doing great. Thanks for having Stephen me. and I have known each other for about, I hate to even say this, it's got to be what, 30 years? <laughs> it's a long time. Yeah. Okay. So we're real, real old. The next guy I'm going to bring in is a person that I've come to have a lot of respect for. It's Greg Stitz, and he's the the uh, CTO of uh, of uh, the group, and such a smart uh, guy. And it, it's taught me so much just in really the short, probably five or so years that we've known each other. Greg, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for making. Yeah. Thanks, David. Thanks Next. for the kind words, Dave. Oh, listen, they're 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 all true, or, or or I just wouldn't say them. I just say some guy named Greg that's <laughs> that does a bunch of cool stuff for NAD and Blue Sound. But no, you're really uh, you're really quite a uh, um, a staple at at that company because I'm pretty sure you're the you're the the one with the longest tenure uh, in this in this whole conversation. So. Thanks a lot for joining. I know you're really busy. And by the way, thank you for uh, uh, making the roofers stop banging on your on your roof at exactly four o'clock. Really nice. No, they're still banging up there. But anyway, we'll try and manage around it. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be just fine. At least we another won't get guy, wet. So another we'll new roof. We won't get wet. <laughs> there you go. Another guy I'm going to bring on is someone that um, he's he really teaches me a lot uh, since I've known him, but he makes me laugh about as much as he teaches me stuff. He's just got a great personality. Uh, one of my favorite guys in the industry, Marshall Courier. How you doing, buddy? Good, David. Good. We're thrilled to be here. Yeah. Big it, group. We're going to have some fun. I, th I think so. Thanks a lot for joining us. And then certainly last, but certainly not least, 
uh, I'd like to welcome Matt Simmons to the uh, to the show. And Matt has got a super important job at uh, at Lindbrook. He is the production manager of Blue Sound, uh, which is I mean, I don't I don't know if that's your largest division, guys, but I certainly know that that has been the catalyst of a lot of people getting introduced to um, superior streamers and also to the rest of your brands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. So we're really we're really lucky to have you guys as partners and happy to have you here. Um, as I was telling the, the guys yesterday, um, we are getting so many people on a daily basis uh, that ask us, you know, what what streamer do you, should we get? A, a lot of people just don't even know. So many people are still just getting into streaming that this is just a totally foreign concept to them. And they want to know how to do this. Our biggest recommendation always, every single time, almost every single time is Blue Sound. Um, why do we recommend Blue Sound so much? Is because a lot of times people want to get into this technology, but they don't want to spend eight million dollars to do it. And so, with Blue Sound for about five hundred dollars, you can you could get into high resolution streaming, um, which to me is absolutely remarkable. You'll have to pardon my dog. Can you guys hear him? <laughs> He's saving us from the postman or, or some <laughs> some menacing figure that's that's outside the door. But uh, at any rate, Matt, let's uh, let's uh, let's start with you, buddy. Um, what have you been working on lately? I mean, it's it's just kind of tough to keep up with Blue Sound because it's it's not something that just you know uh, uh, updates itself and you know you put out a product like a pair of speakers or something and you kind of sit back for five years and, right. and you're kind of done. <laughs> no, so I what's, think, uh, what's yeah, new with you? I think, I feel like that's a function of uh, the space that we've entered into, right? Like it's not, it isn't, it isn't the traditional space necessarily. There's a lot of tech involved obviously. And um, technology, as we all know, moves really quickly. So um, the, the product, the product itself has to adapt. Um, the company, as a company, we've had to adapt and, uh, yeah, it's, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of moving parts. Um, and it, I think a function, like it's a function of the technology that, that moves along so quickly. Yeah. Well, you guys have done a fabulous job on this. I got to tell you, I thought you were nuts. I mean, cause I've been, I've been doing, I've been following this since before you even started the project. And when you finally did start the project, I'm looking at myself, I mean, I'm thinking to myself, are these guys crazy? Don't they know that this is probably going to end up taking them a decade and probably costing multiple years of, of time to do this? And because at the time there was there was and I, I, we'll get into this a little bit later. But but at the at the time, there are already several streaming platforms that you kind of guys could have easily said, oh, let's just buy this one. But instead, you guys said, you know, we really want to do this ourselves because we want to do some things that aren't being done right now. I can't tell you how much I respect David, that. David, if you if you had known that, I don't know why you didn't, you know, tell us about it because <laughs> you should have told us. <laughs> would have saved us a lot of uh, pain over the years. I think. But, no, um, no, no, no. It would have just made my. Uh, it would have just made my theory a true theory, which <laughs> it wasn't. It it was like I'm so glad you guys did go yeah. through that pain and yeah, that pain. and. We're, you know, we're glad we, we're glad we did it too. Like you kind of alluded to it. Um, there were other solutions available, um, 10 years ago when we started looking at how to bring, um, bring our brands into the streaming world. And <clears throat> there were, yeah, there were other solutions like system on, on chips and, and modules and stuff that we could have used and actually went down the road to start using. Um, and, uh, and then org organizationally, probably right at the last, kind of the last minute, I would say. We um, organizationally kind of stepped back, I think, and said, wait a sec, are we going to be beholden to, you know, to another another company's kind of whims in terms of the way that they um, the way that they develop themselves? What what if that company goes under like it was all, you know, we were coming out of a pretty major recession at that time and stuff, too. So um, we yeah, we decided um, for better or for worse. And we think for 
very much for the better, um, not just for us, but for a lot of a lot of others and for a, a lot of people who are looking for high resolution streaming. Um, we think we, we decided to, to go at it ourselves. And yeah, definitely many years and definitely lots of money and definitely um, quite a bit of pain, but also a lot of pleasure and a lot of fun along the way. So it's been it's been a good journey so far. This was such a narcissistic topic for me to start in. So I'll apologize to you guys all because really there's quite an umbrella over over the whole thing, over the whole company, uh, right. Lindbrook in general. But um, tell you what, Stephen, while you're while we're, we're we're sort of at the beginning, instead of diving into just specific product, why don't you give us like kind of an umbrella view of uh, of NAD and blue sound and kind of what your philosophies are. And maybe Greg, you can kind of hop in there as well, because you've got so much to do with this from a everyday make it happen kind of a level. So yeah, uh, Stephen, tell, tell us a little bit about. Well, Lenbrook, as uh, many of our viewers know, has been in business for the better part of 50 years and the brands that we either own or have distributed in Canada and the United States pretty much represent the cream of the crop. Uh, we've always been uniquely associated with premium quality audio and video products. Uh, the reason is because we're all music lovers and more recently, we're also movie lovers. We wanna hear and see products perform to the fullest of the artist's particular vision. So this is true of all the brands that we have. Presently, we're representing NAD, which we own, PSB, which we own, uh, Blue Sound, which we own, and Dolly loudspeakers in the United States. Um, we make products to be used. Uh, we want to make products which, which have audiophile grade performance, but we also want to make products that are, that are high value, high performance and high value. We don't think that uh, building products that are uh, contemporary or uh, paying attention to some of the trends in the marketplace, uh, we don't believe that that makes it, uh, that it's mutually exclusive. In other words, we think that it's possible to build really uh, compelling products that take advantage of the way that people actually listen to music and use music. And we all know that music has become more important to people and there's more music consumed because of the internet and because of, the, of, of all the content that's available. So music is more important than, than ever. But while we have that, this sort of wonderland of people wanting to consume more music, we know that there have been a number of significant changes in the way that people use music and the way they listen to it. So just as an example, if you take a 30,000 foot view we, we transition from analog to digital. More recently, we're transitioning in all kinds of endeavors from lower resolution content to higher resolution content. We also are transitioning from fixed media like records, tapes, and CDs to streaming-based products or streaming-based content, cloud-based content. We're also, we're also seeing a transition from wired products to wireless products. And we're also seeing a transition from the way that people listen to music. They are no longer set in one particular place in the listening room, but they want to take their music with them or they want to enjoy it in multiple, multiple sites within their household. So those are really important tectonic shifts in the way that people consume music. And we've set out to build products that pay attention to those, those changes in the use case for music lovers. And that's why we build Blue Sound products and NAD products and PSB products and, and the like. Uh, so, again, we think that it's important to say that, that we can provide audiophile grade performance while also paying attention to these other trends. I think a lot of people have found that. Uh, I think a lot of people have found that to be true. Uh, I mean, I certainly know I have. I've got some crazy systems here and have. The, the blue sound actually just travels. It goes to <laughs> a lot of places depending on what I'm doing. Uh, and yeah, you're absolutely right. You, I can hook that up to this big, huge Martin Logan system that I've got at my desktop or my icon system um, uh, downstairs. And let me share something with you. I've never been embarrassed. I've never brought somebody over and went, 
check this out and they go, wow, do you have a little more, do you have a $20,000 server? Nobody ever says that. It's just like, you know, drop the jaw and, and, you know, and, and, and go, there was a great question that I think uh, I'd like Greg to, to answer here. It's from John Knight. Um, did you guys think it would be as revolutionary as, it, as it's been when you guys were, when you uh, guys were uh, uh, designing blue sound and, and, you know, put it out, Greg, what did you think? I mean, cause I know you had a really big hand in, in this thing from the very beginning. So were you in like just fear or were you super confident? Well, you know, it's in, it's an interesting story because we uh, celebrated 40 years at NAD back in uh, 2012. And at that time, we really took a, uh, a long look at what had made us successful over the previous 40 years. And we wanted to map out a plan for where we would be in the next 40 years, which, of course, you can't see that far into the future. But there were trends in place that, uh, that Stephen just outlined about things going... Uh, from physical media to streaming media, from uh, wired audio to wireless. Those were all trends that were on the horizon. The problem was at that time, all of those uh, ways of getting music, while very convenient, you know, there was iTunes and there was um, Pandora, but they didn't sound good. They didn't sound as good as an LP. They didn't even sound as good as a CD. So, uh, you know, we set out to join the, the party uh, and bring what we do best to the party, which is we're really an audio company and a music lovers company first and foremost. And we wanted to bring that into this sort of space that had been dominated more by computer companies than by audio companies. So that was the, uh, the kind of uh, background that we, that we took. And, uh, you know, we were always optimistic that we'd be successful, but you know, the road continues on and we're still traveling. So it's uh, every day brings some new and interesting uh, twists and turns that uh, that we get to respond to. And just kind of going back a little bit to what Stephen uh, was saying, um, which I don't know, maybe could have sounded hypey, but it's 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 honestly not. Um, this is a this is a comment from one of our uh, more respected audiophile society leaders, Mark Block, who's just a terrific guy. Um, very little ego. He just wants to know the real thing. But Mark uh, in his society, he runs the New Jersey Audio Society, which it, tons of people are in that. I'm not quite sure how many, but I was on their program uh, a few weeks ago. And some of the most intelligent, well thought out, respectful questions I've ever gotten from any um, from any group, but really, really highly knowledgeable. And Mark's just talking about huge amount of interest in in Blue Sound from um, from a lot of his friends. But I, I, I'm pretty sure Mark doesn't have uh, his, a lot of his friends are you know huge audiophiles. So you know, really cool stuff. Mar Marshall. Um, and believe me, Matt, we're going to, we're going to get to you, but it's going to be for probably a little deeper, uh, into the whole blue sound, uh, um, uh, I'm, good, whole, I'm good to just listen to Marshall, Greg and Steven. Chat, <laughs> so, you know. Well, what I'd like to know from Marshall is good. Marshall really deals with, um, with real people. <laughs> I mean, Marshall is like, oh, right it, it takes <laughs> a not that, not that Steven and, and, and Craig, you know, but I mean, you know, these are, these are very high level guys and they're, you know, dealing with kind of high level people. Marshall does as well, but his high level people are the people that really make things happen. They're the people that um, have to understand what they're selling before they can actually sell it. Why would you spend, you know, Five hundred dollars on a streamer when you can get one for a hundred. I mean, I, I could show you fifty streamers you could get it, it for a hundred dollars. Uh, uh, but you actually, Marshall, you're the one that gets to see this. So you get to see these these, and we're really kind of talking about the note here because I think it it just um, transcends so many levels in audio. Uh, from something that's super, super modest to something that's, you know, well over, you know, billions of dollars or whatever. It's, it's ones and zeros, right? Ones and zeros are done right or wrong. Um, how do you see, uh, how do you see the blue sound 
node uh, being um, being received at, at, at the retailers and, and by the, the, the people that are actually having to sell it? Well, you know, one of the commenters said a few minutes ago, it was a revolutionary device. Uh, you just said it was it's a transcendent device. You know, what I see in the marketplace, and this is across dealer partners, business to business side of the fence, and then also clients and consumers is that it's it's an easy product to fall in love with. It's an easy product to integrate into a system. It's a great sounding product. It's at the right price point. And I know that's that's a bit sales pitchy, but what's interesting is that uh, it, it it is a reference quality streamer. And we've got people all across the industry that are buying these, um, it, it, you know, other companies, uh, amplifier companies, speaker companies, interconnect companies, power conditioner companies. And they're putting the Blue Sound node into their demo systems for trade shows back before we all went virtual with virtual trade shows. And so I think that really speaks to, you know, obviously customers are enjoying it. Customers are loving it. Um, it's an easy product to get into. And I'll talk about that in a minute. But what's interesting uh, from an industry insider's perspective, it's neat to be respected by your peers and other companies in the space uh, and have that product picked up really in a meaningful way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, t I, I totally agree. And I could see how you guys would be uh, super proud to, um, to, to just be talking about this to, you know, as many levels of people a, as right. you do. I can tell you from my perspective, when I go on this on, on floors or when I went on floors, right. hopefully we'll be able to get back on there soon. It's just one of those things you see all over the place. There's like nobody that doesn't have it. Uh, but it, they have it for, for good reasons. And you see it in so many different kinds of dealers. But I think the reason that you see it so much is because it's just, it's just rock solid. The thing just works, which Matt. You, you know, you know, David, I, in, in my experience, you've got this situation where there are people in the home that want the high res stuff. They want that high res. They want the Cobuzz experience. But then you have people in the home that kind of want to plug in their audio not really peripherals, but their audio lives. As Steven talked about, we're just, we're all big music lovers. And that's one of the cool things about Blue Sound is that you can kind of come at us from different angles and bring your audio to us and we're going to play it. You know, whether it's Bluetooth app decks, whether it's AirPlay, whether it's Rune, what, you know, even if it's Cobuzz with a family plan, which by the way, I love my family plan. My wife's got her own account. I've got my account, different playlists, and, and we're using different Blue Sound speakers at the same time across the house during the day and then in the evening we can blend it together which is great but having kind of being a swiss audio or a swiss a swiss a swiss army knife for audio is just terrific and you know like i said it, it plus we sound great too it's a it's a terrific sounding platform and we do up to 24 192 so we're not leaving anybody out of the out of the mix you know we, we play cobuzz's entire library at full quality all around the house you know, yeah, that, and I gotta tell you, you do a great job of it. I just wanna I just wanna kind of hit on something that you said there because I didn't tell you guys this yesterday, and I hope I hope I'm not gonna get in trouble for saying it right now, but I am using my node more now than I ever have. Mm -hmm. Um because it is in my studio now. It's it's actually right is on it top in of my the bass mid drum or is it behind the bass drum? It's 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 right next to my it's right next to my mixing console and I've got it run into a couple of channels, and so here's what happens with mine. Uh, I use it every single day, but I'm putting on like the new porcupine tree and trying to learn the part, right? And then when I'm finished with that, let me tell you something that I really really dig about this thing. It's Bluetooth. Why would I want anything with Bluetooth? Bluetooth. I mean, honestly, between us girls it kind of sucks. I mean, unless you have to use it, it's better than FM. I'm not, I'm not going to say it. it's not, but it is so absolute convenient. So when I'm listening to music, I'm full or high right. res on, on this system. I've never had that in my life. And I cannot tell you how much I love it because I use really good headphones and I actually can tell the difference. Not that that even matters, but what I use it for a whole lot is connecting it up to blue sound. And I've got this little. Cool. 
This is called a torture device if you're a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> but now I get to blue sound it to the thing. And I'm going to finish, you know, making myself crazy just before I want to stick a pencil in my neck or something. I take the metronome off and I'm playing music. I'm having the best time with it. I've got to get another uh, node so that I can actually put it back down in my really hot if system. You, comment, you can oh. enter to win one if you comment. <laughs> hey man, I think I'm commenting way too much. I'm actually over commented. So there's no way that I'm going to get in into this thing. Uh, David, yeah. Thanks for the perspective, Marshall. That's David Steve, let me yeah. and make a comment. You can probably see behind me. I'm a collector of records and CDs. I have a pretty large library and I use blue sound uh, all the time now, but I don't just use it for uh, streaming uh, high resolution stuff, I've found uh, or discovered the, the flexibility to listen to internet radio. And I use it as background music, just in a similar way by tuning into WQXR in New York or Radio Paradise or WFMU, which is a cool alternate station in New Jersey that's been around for like 50 years. That's that's an aspect of blue sound that I didn't really expect to discover and enjoy as much as I do. Although, you know, listening to listening to stuff like, you know, the new Joni Mitchell, which I have on CD, but I also have it downloaded from Cobus. You know, you have it a 2496 file and it makes it extremely convenient to access it so you can you can use the products in so many ways. It's really a lot of fun. Steve, Stephen and I would would drive most people crazy with the conversations that we had because both of us are terribly into Prague, and unless you're into Prague, it's like listening to 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 two people that are talking gibberish and nonsense uh, because we're all about you know the latest King Crimson concert or, Oh my gosh, did you see the, did you see the, uh, uh, did you see the new, did you hear the new porcupine tree album? I was like, no, it's, Oh my God, the third song you got to Steven and I are, are talk. We're, we're, we are partners, but we've known each other for way longer than we've been partners. So our conversations typically at the beginning or the end or in the middle or intertwined turn they always turn into music every single time. The, the, the common element is Gavin Harrison, who is drummer for former drummer for Porcupine Tree and now for King Crimson, one of the most amazing musicians. So we talk about him a lot. I used to have a set of drums. I don't consider myself a drummer. Um, the, really the point that I'm making but, though, and I, I could have made this point with Greg and with, uh, with uh, Marshall and certainly with Matt as well, is that, you know something we we do this but aren't aren't we so lucky that we don't just have a job it's like we our job is turning people on to music and great ways to listen to music and in and having them uh have the ability to listen to music in in a more in-depth way so it's like i you know i even hate to hear my people at cobuzz hear me say this but it's like I, can't, I still can't believe they're actually paying me to do this. <laughs> this is like, can you believe they're doing that? Well, we that are day, really in all, in all like, fairness, I think we won. <laughs> in all fairness, you work really hard and you work really hard at making great playlists. So I would like you way less if you didn't have such great playlists because Dave's faves is like what I play has the best playlists, when someone wants doubt. to listen to music. Yeah, well, it's all a labor of love, guys. You know, the, what do they say? If you find something you love to do, you'll never work a day in your life, right? Like, honey, I have to, I have to drive down to Vintage Vinyl and buy some, buy some more CDs for work. Oh, uh, my, my, right. my wife's even worse than that. I go, oh, what are you talking about? So, honey, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I've, I've got to work, and she goes, work. <laughs> right okay go do your work honey <laughs> okay yeah thanks a lot <laughs> but i want to get to matt matt you you have i gotta tell you you and your team have done a fabulous job and i don't want to say that and it sound like it's like i'm blowing warm, warm sunshine up your skirt Feels i was nice. there when we but it does feel kind of good doesn't yeah. it uh, I, I was there when you guys were were uh, enacting the the API from from Cobus, 
Right. And here's the thing that I was the most impressed of. Um, I, I called you guys. I actually, I think I just wrote a letter and I said, guys, you know, can you please at least let us designate what high resolution is or what, what, it, what's not. Because when I first got the blue sound app and I opened it up and of course I was with, with, uh, uh, Cobus at that point, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, guys, you know, this is all great, but I feel like I'm on Spotify. I can't tell, I can't right. tell what's high resolution and what CD or even right. what's MP3. And I wrote a letter to you guys. And I said, you know, and I, I, I expressed my concerns. And Matt, I got to tell you, I was so impressed because within about, I guess it was about two weeks, um, it may have been you or Andrew, I can't remember exactly who wrote me back going, oh, it's all done now. And I'm thinking, it's, what do you mean it's all done now? <laughs> so I hop on the Blue Sound app and I, I open it up. Oh, there's an update. Okay, I update it. And then all of a sudden, to my, you know, joy, Light. I see now the two Beatles albums. This one's HR, this one's standard. Matt, thank you. I, I really, really, as a customer, appreciate the way you guys listen to your customers and actually don't just listen to them, but if it makes sense, you make the changes happen. Totally. I mean, I, I think you're hitting on something like super key for us as a company where that's our aim is like to make products that people love and, and delight people. So how can you, I don't know how you do that when, if you're just like mad scientists in a lab, um, like with your head in the sand and just kind of, you know, going for it, you, you, you gotta, you gotta listen. Um, we all love to listen to whether it's music or audio of all sorts. And so we like to listen also to, to, to human beings, um, to, to people who are, uh, who, who, who appreciate the same things that we do, which is, as everyone has alluded to already, music first, for sure. And then, you know, quality comes right after that. Well, we were talking a little while ago, Matt, about uh, just you guys getting into this business. And and like I said, I, I was looking at the whole thing because at that about that point, I think Slim Devices may have just been bought or just prior to being bought by Logitech. Greg, was that, was that before or... Or uh, when 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 exactly was that in in the um, in the uh, history of Blue Sound was was uh, Slim Devices still Slim Devices or did it already was it already moved to Logitech? No, they moved to Logitech. I think around two thousand five or six, and then in two thousand eight when the or two thousand nine when the Great Recession hit, uh, uh, they really pulled the plug on Slim Devices and. Uh, and uh, that actually benefited our development quite a bit. You think? <laughs> well, I mean, we actually uh, hired several of their people uh, to help accelerate. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm. Um, and it was, uh, you know, very beneficial in hindsight um, because at that time they were the only streamers that did high resolution um, were the Slim devices. The downside with Slim devices was that it was totally open source so that it really became uh, overloaded with everybody had their pet feature in there and they could, you know, if you could write code, you could write code in slim devices. And so it, it got a little unwieldy because it didn't have a singular vision. And that was one of the big things that we took up with Blue Sound. And when we developed our app was, and by the way, that was before there were iPhones and, uh, and iPads and everything. You had to make your own tablet. Uh, uh, and we actually, we never came out with our own tablet, but we had one all developed. Uh, but at that point, the App Store opened up and uh, and the Android Marketplace and uh, those devices were so affordable because they were made in such large quantities. Um, well, that was about that was an issue for the music industry is we're kind of a niche in the world. We're nothing like the telephone business. Uh, you know, we're just the hi-fi guys. So... We really took advantage of uh, of all of those things coming together to uh, to launch Blue Sound and Blue Oss. And actually, I think Blue Oss was first in an NAD product. It was in the uh, we had something we called the Digital Music Suite in our masters products. And there was a, an M50 that was the first thing to use our technology. And then very quickly after that, um, uh, the Blue Sound brand was introduced. 
And the reason we introduced Blue Sound was to address uh, a broader marketplace, a, a marketplace that of what we call the uh, digital natives or the audiophile 2.0s. These are, you know, younger people than me, which is pretty easy to do these days. But, um, uh, but you know, they grew up with with an iPhone, with a, a, an iPod, and earbuds, and MP3s, and Napster, and you know, how do how do we transition that into get this tremendous thirst and hunger for music and love of music, but transition it into uh, the high resolution world, the studio master world, where you can really hear all the music and you can feel the music and the music gets inside you in a way that uh, it just never quite does with an MP3. So that's kind of how we got uh, got rolling with, uh, with Blue Sound. Well, I'll, I will absolutely commend you guys on your foresight because that's exactly what this took. This that's exactly what this took because I mean, it literally took a decade to start maturing. Uh, it takes quite a commitment from any company to look ten years out and go, you know, we're committed to this um, as opposed to just we should be committed for doing this <laughs> There's, because like I say, that was such a large take from my perspective, Matt, I was looking at this, like there, there are honestly guys, I wasn't even thinking about high resolution at that point. I was just thinking about full resolution and Sonus was out at that point and they could actually do full resolution. Most people didn't even know it. Uh, but in my my limited foresight, I was looking at it going, you know, why don't you guys just buy a, a, a thing and market it? Because everyone knows you could market really good, but the ability to actually hire a team and get something this complicated done, uh, Matt, that must have been, uh, that must have been on pins and needles just, just for at, at least five or six, seven years. Because I know when you guys first started this thing, you guys had some hiccups, right? Yeah, I kind of alluded to it before, and I and I to be honest, I wasn't actually around at that point. But um, but that's okay. I I know the story, and uh, yeah, it's I I feel like well, pro like developing a product is never as easy as it you, you kind of think as you set out to do it. But especially into a space like this, where like I I mentioned before, like technology is evolving, even to the point where. Like Greg just just talked about, like we had a tablet, like we had our own, you know, um, control device developed, and then all of a sudden, iPhones and iPads and and Android tablets and stuff become more widely available, and the app stores are are finally a thing. And it's like, oh right, all that money and time um, spent on a <laughs> developing that that uh, controller device um, kind of out the window, except except that you learn a lot through it and and all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, um, like rapid advancement of the market, rapid advancement of technology and all that kind of stuff. But um, we along the way, like I, I, I did mention this off the top. So but anybody who is joining joining now, um, you know, Blue Sound, Blue Sound was almost not Blue Oss in a sense. Like, I guess it probably would have been. But, um, you know, Blue Sound was almost Blue Sound was really almost NAD with a, an off the shelf streaming solution, really, probably. <laughs> Uh, that would have been probably the starting point of of where this was all going and yeah like 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 you've said um foresight is is nice and maybe a little bit of of luck and but a lot of hard work and um and you know just making hard decisions i don't know we all need to do that in uh in every di different parts of life not just in business but making hard decisions to kind of like set out on on this journey um i mean i commend our team for doing that 10 years ago and diving into an area where um we we had to get up to speed really quickly but um there there were there were a couple of nice you know like like greg talked about um being able to hire on some of the um slim devices people um early on in in our development to to really to really guide a lot of the the thinking and stuff um that that was helpful for us obviously um Matt, do you so, still have anybody working with you guys that was uh, formerly from uh, from Slim Devices? Or yeah, 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 really? Yeah, it's not. It's not Andrew, is it? Mm -mm. A Andrew no, was no, awesome. No. I really, 
you guys work together, I'm guessing, right? Yeah, Andrew and I work together super closely. Um, yeah. What a smart uh, guy. No, the Slim Devices guys are in the background. They're, you know, they're writing code. They're, uh, yeah. they're not interacting with, with, you know, they're, they're yeah, you real. Write code. You, that's what you do. You, you, don't, <laughs> you don't find a lot of code writers that are public speakers for, for probably good reason, right? I mean, they sort of they're do what they do. Living off pizza and, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they speak in ones and zeros. It's hard to understand. Hey, listen, I appreciate those guys. They're they're a little above my level to actually totally. speak with. Like, I mean, I, I wish I could take I could take a few minutes and just brag on our team. They're incredible, really. So and and you when you were talking about uh you know getting that feature that that um the quality indicator feature done, like that's that's yeah, these guys saying, Okay, um there's a thousand ways we can approach this problem. Let's uh Let's decide on on the way we're going to do it and get it done, and and they do it pretty quickly. It was it was a great process because, I mean, I've worked with all kinds of companies, and sometimes you 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 work with these you know totally engineering based companies that will tell you why you don't need a a feature that you want, um, and they can make it sound really really good. Uh, base and treble happen to be one of those. And I, that's one of the things I dig about some of the ENAD stuff. You guys are going, screw that. A lot of people like that. So we're going to, you know, we're going to let, we're going to let you have, it. we're going to allow you to have it. Mm -hmm. uh, it. It's, you know, kudos. It, it just, to me, that's real. That's, Real world situations sometimes require those kinds of real world things. Hey, Neetha, just in just in case someone hasn't seen it, could you bring? Could you please, if you can hear me? Uh, actually, I think she's got it right here. It's right here. The node. I just wanted people to be able to see the node and power node, um, just so that they could kind of see what they look like. And just in case they didn't know, um, I didn't really bring a back shot, but. Um, Marshall and uh, Matt, can you just kind of go through how you, believe it or not, there are some people that don't know this. Can you just go through how easy it is to hook something like that up in, you know, 30, 45 seconds, just let folks know what you have to do? Yeah. Go for it, Marshall. Yeah, thanks, Matt. So, you know, what's interesting about the the Blue Sound product line as, as a whole, soundbar, three speakers, and then three three streamers, if you will. Uh, the only product in the platform you know that, that carries the Blue Sound brand that doesn't have Wi-Fi is the Vault. The Vault is the only product that lacks Wi-Fi. So everything else has Wi-Fi. It can, can connect to your local area network and set up like any conventional AirPlay speaker if you have an iOS device, or if it's an Android product, it sets up through Wi-Fi hotspot. So, so uh, the simplest way to explain it is this: when you plug in your Blue Sound unit. The blue sound unit is going to make its own Wi-Fi, and then your smartphone <clears throat> simply will connect to the blue sound Wi-Fi unit. It, it, it's, it's called hotspot mode. And when your phone connects to the blue sound unit and you open up the blue sound app, the app will take care of the rest. So that that sort of hotspot mode is is used in a lot of devices. If you've ever purchased, you know, um, a, a, a doorbell camera, if you've ever purchased a smart plug. If you've ever purchased um, any one of these kind of Internet of Things devices, almost all of them use this hotspot mode technique. Printers use hotspot mode, although printers are a bit more difficult to set up. But it's it's super simple to set up a Blue Sound unit. You just plug it in, join the Wi-Fi, and then go to the Blue Sound app, and the app takes care of the rest. It's real simple. Uh, you brought up something that that's that is so relevant, and I got to tell you, I, I recommend this all the time. Um, we were talking about uh, uh, wireless and wired. Um, I, I can just tell you from a Cobus perspective, unless you've just got like Wi-Fi that is going to give you cancer, <laughs> just wire it. it. It's like if you just want to have no problems ever uh, when your kids are playing Fortnite and, you know, your right. wife is streaming The Bachelorette or whatever, your your Wi-Fi is just being super, super taxed some way. I just go, look, when you're dealing, when you start dealing with this level of a signal, I I all I just always wire it. It's just well, you know, Dave, 2020's changed Wi-Fi, I think, is as we know it. 2020's changed Wi-Fi forever. And yeah. for, for it's changed it for better, right? Yep. Because we didn't and realize it's getting better. 
of course it's getting better. You know, we, we didn't, we as a population, as a technology loving population didn't realize there's this thing in Wi-Fi called airtime fairness. And airtime fairness is when a device is broadcasting to the local access point, it, it, it has, a, has a, a dedicated connection. And if something else wants to communicate with that access point, that wireless router, the, the, you know, the one unit, the primary unit has to stop communicating. Airtime fairness is kind of this back and forth, walkie talkie sort of, you know, 10, four over and out back and forth. And so if you have a single band radio on your Wi-Fi router, if it's a one band Wi-Fi router and you've got 10 devices trying to talk to it, game over, game over, particularly if you're streaming something. Streaming something takes all that and it breaks it all down. So a Zoom phone call, Netflix, Fortnite, like you said, breaks it all down. So I think, I think we as a populace have learned more about Wi-Fi in the last six months than, than ever before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it's getting better. And, and, and we're in a really interesting time right now where all the planets happen to be aligning and that uh, internet speeds that we're getting these days are, they just dwarf the speeds that we were getting just a couple of years ago. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I'm dealing with thousand up, thousand down, even though I don't even, I don't think I even need that much, but it sounds real cool. So I'm paid the 80 bucks. I'm getting a thousand, <laughs> a thousand down. I really, I was, I was really like internet envious when I started working for Tidal years ago and in the Scandinavian countries and the Nordics, they were, they all had thousand up thousand down megabits. back then when we had an average of literally two to three megabits per second. It just so happens that we're up to now about 60 as an average but, get, but most way. people, most people don't know that's that's the connection to the outside world. Right. Then you have that has a local, nothing to do with what's going to happen when you get it inside your when house. You get it inside. So you have a local area network connection, and that's and going back to your question earlier, what do I deal with on a daily basis? Is explaining that to people. You know, you have a local area connection speed and a wide area network or WAN speed test, and the speedtest.net app that's just testing your your outside internet access. It has this nothing is, to do with the quality of the connection in the house and that sort of stuff. And so one of our products called the Blue Sound Vault 2i uh, is Ethernet only because it's a music server. And if you have a big digital collection like you, David, or Steven, or, or Greg, I don't know, Matt, Matt and I probably don't have as much of a co collection as those guys. I got uh, some CDs. Yeah, yeah. What What is this thing? This, uh, this, this round? It's a coaster, right? But... Um, because it's a music server, you know, we we made the, the critical product design decision, Matt, Matt, Matt and Greg's teams, uh, to, to omit Wi-Fi from that product. And although some people may see it as a burden, what it really does in actuality is it makes the product better because it kind of makes people make that difficult decision to put an Ethernet cable on it. Because you can spend a thousand bucks on a Wi-Fi network and a ten dollar Ethernet cable will still be better than the thousand dollar Wi-Fi network. Yeah, and there was a really interesting question, and, and maybe you guys can all kind of share this one. I know I've got a few different ways to do this if there's just absolutely no way to get a wired uh, um, uh, connection in a particular room. Do, do you guys, Matt, you're kind of on the technical side. Um, I'll, I'll throw mine up in a few minutes, but there, you, you've got a, a slab. Or you've got a, a house that just there's just no way you you can either get get a, a a hardwired signal there, or you don't want to pay somebody to do it, or they can't do it for some reason. Right behind the main system, there is no Wi-Fi. What well, or there's no uh, Ethernet connection. What are your what are your best suggestions uh, when somebody's dealing with that, and they're dealing with high resolution that that potentially will start skipping. Mm -hmm. Marshall's probably got more experience on that, to be honest. Well, the, um, you know, uh, Ethernet over yeah. power. That, that's my favorite one. Mm. Yeah, power me too. I was network. just wondering if you guys had some, you know, other fancy thing that you were using. No, that, that's magic. Uh, Eth uh, um, the, the PLC adapters. PLC adapters are inexpensive. And one of the really nice side effects that folks don't realize on the power line carrier adapters, that's the PLC, is that by putting a device on a PLC adapter, a power line carrier adapter, that's one, one less device that's on your Wi-Fi network. Right. 
And typically it's a very communicative, very talkative device. It's, it's doing a lot of broadcast. And I'll, I'll say this quickly and get off the subject. One of the things I recommend to lots of customers is they have likely a many streaming devices in one cabinet, Apple TV, Roku, TiVo, what, you know, Comcast X1, whatever it is here, here in the US. Uh, with one power line carrier adapter can go behind that system. The other unit, it's kind of like a, a, you know, two cans and a string. The other unit goes behind the router. And then what you can do with like a $19 ethernet switch is put everything in that one cabinet on that power line adapter. So that the Apple TV, your Kobas, Blue Sound Note 2i, you know, your smart TV, all that's on ethernet. It's all using that single connection back to the main router. And then that's five fewer devices that's on your Wi-Fi. Tell you what, while we're uh, while we're uh, going around with this, I, that, that's just a great explanation. And guys, I couldn't uh, I couldn't recommend this more highly. Uh, I was in this situation with my with one of my systems right behind my drums, and not not too terribly long ago. And I just went out and bought a couple. I think they ran at eighty bucks or something. Plugged one downstairs by the router. Yep. Plugged the other one up right beside the uh, the studio system. And then just ran an Ethernet cable to both sides, one from the router to the main to the main plug, and then another one over here. And all of my problems just stopped. So if you don't know, <laughs> the, the guys from Lindbrook just gave you a really good way to uh, to enhance the backbone of your system, which is your e Ethernet, whether you're running uh, NAD, Blue Sound, or something something else excuse me <coughs> pardon me <clears throat> but at any rate uh great explanation marshall i was going to get you maybe to just pull something up uh on your screen uh like a little power line adapter that, that we could show people uh in just a little bit that they can uh that they can uh, see you can actually just send that to Neetha and she'll uh, she'll throw it up on screen okay. um so at any rate, we've kind of done the node, which is to me a, a, a such a core, uh, such a core of 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 your your company, and really allows you guys to do so much more and expand in so many different ways. And so you guys have got some products now that uh, that have node at the core that I like to call uh, a twenty first century twenty first century gear. They've actually got <laughs> your your integrateds now. So many of your integrateds now have got the features that people just want to use anyway. What a novel idea! Uh, the first one I think we'll we'll bring up is this little guy here, the M thirty three. What an incredible piece of gear! You you guys want to talk about this just a little bit? Sure, I'd love to. Uh, I'll jump in on that one, David. Um, with the M33, we've uh, taken uh, the, the functionality of the node and we've added to it all of the other inputs that you might want, like moving magnet, moving coil, quano. Um, we also have introduced a new uh, uh, amplifier technology in this product called Eigentac. It's, uh, it's probably the most advanced amplifier in the world today. And uh, it's developed out of a group in uh, Denmark. You mentioned Denmark before. Uh, and these are uh, industry, uh, these are a couple of the amazing gurus in our industry that have come together to create some, uh, a new type of amplifier. And uh, uh, it, just, it just blows away all the specifications, every single area, it's not just low in distortion or powerful or efficient. It's all of those things and more. And it just brings the sound of a, uh, it's being, I mean, the reviewers, you see some of the review uh, and awards there, but they're comparing it to amplifiers that cost $20,000 uh, just for a basic power amp. And they're saying, this is right in that category. So it's, it's really a groundbreaking product. And, uh, we just swept all the products of the year in the Stereophile Awards this year. It just came out. Um, so we got Best Amplifier, uh, Best Component of the Year, and the Editor's Choice for the Best Product of the Year. So it's, uh, it's quite an amazing product. It also has a beautiful full-color touchscreen on the front, 
so you can see your album art. We also have these really cool view meters in it that you can switch to if you want. Um, and uh, it, it just, it's all you need is that product and a pair of high-end speakers and you have a state-of-the-art system. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's a that's an incredible uh, that's an incredible product. Um, tell me, I, just we've so actually, people can get, we've actually got a number of products that have essentially the same configuration, and are the the unifying theme is just add speakers. So the top of the line is the M thirty three, but we also have a less expensive product called the M ten, and an even less expensive product called the Power Note. But they all function essentially the same way. They differ in terms of their uh, industrial design, some of the user interface, but they all have NAD amplification plus NAD blue sound streaming. And uh, we think that that these types of products, which essentially replace traditional audio equipment, are the centerpiece of a, a of a modern audio system. They're very What's the remote control look like? And they're very good. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's the tr remote? Tr tr truthfully, the remote control. Yeah, on There's the M33, it's a nice. Oh, wow. Remote. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you typically control it? For, for Can the you M33, put some more it's buttons like a on regular, it? It's like a regular amplifier, regular integrated amplifier. For the M10, you can use any remote. You can actually buy that remote separately that Greg was just showing for the M33. Uh, for the M10, you can use, actually for any of our products, you can use any remote control. They will learn IR commands from any remote control. Wow. But that remote control well thought really out. showed, yeah, it really is cool. That one comes with the M33, though. That's uh, that's really cool. J just to give people an idea of the kind of power that we that they, they're looking at, uh, when you're looking at the difference between the M10 and the M33, what's the power difference between the two? 100 watts on the M10 and 200 watts per channel on the M33. And, and are those both using the same type of amplification? Uh, similar, but the M33 has this brand new uh, uh, Eigentact, which is uh, where the, it's the first amplifier in the world to feature this technology. And, and you said that's by Bruno, right? Bruno, Bruno, Bruno puts these, yes. Uh, uh, it, Bruno is probably the most respected uh, digital amplifier manufacturer in the world. Um, yeah, this guy's a genius. He's really, he's, he's unbelievable what he's done, what he's accomplished. Yeah, he really, he really is. And Greg and I were actually having a discussion about this, um, yesterday, I believe it was, um, man, I'm going to piss some people off when I say this, uh, but I really don't care because it's, to me, it's, it's, it's true. Um, I believe these days, finally, and this certainly wasn't the case when they first came out, because the first digital amplifiers I heard 10 years ago or so, you, could, you couldn't give them to me. I think they needed to be just all thrown in the trash. They just sounded horrible. They sounded nothing like a quality AB amplifier, and forget A. Um, they were all harsh on the top end, etchy in the mid-range, and frankly they just didn't have a lot of bottom end there was literally the only thing i liked about that amplifier those amplifiers when they first came out was they were efficient that's the only thing that you could say about them uh but as far as really listening to them forget it i, I you couldn't you couldn't pay me to listen to them digital technology has taken huge leaps and bounds. And I think it's very much like uh, digital recording or, or CDs when they were first coming out. Uh, if you liked the way those things sounded, I would question your, your, your judgment. It, it, they're, they're, they weren't very good. Uh, but you guys have been able to come out with this technology that to me, it sounds better than AB amplifiers these days. It really does. It's uh, it's it's moved so fast, and uh, we've been at the cutting edge of that. We we had one of the first true digital amplifiers about a decade ago, ago called the Masters M2, and um, you know at that time we said we will never bring forward a digital amplifier unless it at least sounds as good as our Class AB designs, and we really saw the future uh, in in the digital amplification world there. 
there were a lot of advantages to it, but there were a lot of problems yet to be solved. And as you have just uh, outlined, those problems have one by one uh, dropped away. And we're really at a point now where we not only have about 95% efficiency compared to only about 70% with a class AB amplifier. So all of the electricity coming out of your wall is going to drive the speaker. It's not being wasted as heat. And not only that, but it is so clean and so distortion free. And uh, I mean, this amplifier just does everything well. And we've applied that technology across the whole range of uh, NAD and Blue Sound products. Uh, we, just so, I was just I'm sorry. We have the EigenTalk technology, the two channel amplifier called the C298, and also in a uh, seven channel amplifier called the Intel. What kind of power are those, Stephen? Uh, Marshall. One, 185 on the 298, 185 watts on the 298, and uh, 200 per channel by seven on the M28. So these are st the the uh, the T ninety. That's a stereo amplifier. Is that it's correct? A, it's a power amp. Mm -hmm. Are you guys making any mono blocks like that, or are you keeping it stereo? Uh, they can all be made into mono blocks. Uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, the two channel one can be made into a mono block. So can the M M thirty three. You can make it into a, a really powerful mono amp if you want. So if you make the uh, the two channel amplifier. Um, if you make that, if you do you bridge it, is that the way it's it works? It's bridged, yeah. So if you had, okay. uh, you can buy one and get 185 watts a channel. You can buy a second one, bridge them to mono, and they're at uh, what is it, Marshall? 600 watts, I think. 620, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now here's the thing about uh, AB amplifiers or standard uh, standard amplifier. Uh, you throw one into bridge mode. And they actually, unless they're actually designed as a mono amplifier, bridge mode usually does not sound nearly as good as it did in stereo. But I find just actually the opposite with digital amplifiers. When you uh, when you bridge a digital amplifier, um, you don't lose performance. You don't gain distortion. It just sounds a lot more powerful than it did prior to being bridged. So I, I did not know that. That blended, are they uh, balanced? They're or all fully balanced. All fully, and do you have a single-ended option on it? Single-ended option input, yeah. We also have, I mean, it's a, it's a completely featured, even though it's a basic amplifier, we're talking about the C298 now. This is a $2,000 amplifier with 185 watts channel or 600 watts mono. It's got balanced, single-ended, it's got a variable input. It's got a pass through, so you you can uh, you know shorten your cabling to to make uh, if you're using a couple of them. Um, it's uh, it's got automated features for turn on and turn off, so you can either control it with a 12 volt trigger or it'll signal sense and automatically flip on and off. And it's it's just the whole deal. Uh, detachable power cord if you want to play around with that. Um, you can put on a high end power cord and. One thing, though, that we find is that these uh, new amplifiers that we're doing uh, can draw a huge amount of current out of the wall, um, which is no problem for your house wiring, but a lot of audiophiles like power conditioners. And unless you've got a power conditioner that is really big, it probably will sound better without it. So something, little audiophile tip, we don't really uh, recommend power conditioners on the digital amplifiers. Thank you very much. Really good explanation. And I'm, I'm sorry to dig so deep into that. That was a fair That was the narcissistic part of our meeting because, <laughs> because I dig these kind of amplifiers. I can't wait to take a listen to one. Um, Neetha, uh, by the way, I didn't, uh, I didn't mention this before, but, uh, Neetha Veriporn is, is someone that, who works with me and she's, uh, She's producing these. She always does a fantastic job. So I'd really like to just throw out a big shit, shout out to, to Neetha. And thank you very much. She is just an absolute wonderful person to work with. And I've just fallen in love with her. Um, but she, <laughs> going back just a couple of steps, uh, Neetha pulled up um, a TPL just so you guys could take a look at what Marshall and I were talking about just a little while ago. So you'll notice that one uh, one side plugs into the um, the place where your uh, your router is, and then you just run a little Ethernet to that, 
this would plug right behind your, the other one would plug right behind your system and you could run an ethernet to that. These things have gotten to be uh, yeah, like super inexpensive. I think I paid like 80 bucks or something for the one that I've got and it works. It works great. Fast. The only thing that you might, I've wanted to say this just because I don't want somebody to go out and grab it and it not work. If you got a bunch of dimmers in your house, that will inhibit the uh, the flow of of uh, uh, the speed of your Ethernet. Uh, and especially surge protectors, too. Network. I'm sorry. And surge protectors, too. You want to make surge sure they're not too, connected yeah. to a surge protector. So just, you know, keep that in mind. If you have to do this kind of a little bit of a workaround, then, you know, know that that's uh, that's what's that's what's happening. Um, so uh, let's see. I'm trying to think if we had any other slides that we were bringing up. But before we do that, um, Matt, you must be you must be crazy busy. Um, can you tell us some or and if it's a secret, uh, you know, you could just tell me that as well. But is there any uh, is there anything that you're working on that you think would be interesting uh, to the to the viewers today? We're always working on something. But um, anything you can share, anything yeah, well, that's not you know like what? super um, secret. You know what's so interesting about being in, you know, in in I guess the realm of technological products that we are is that so much of kind of the newness of a product is done in software now. So, so you know, there's there's definitely hardware products um, on the go and projects you know happening and releases happening. We just released a, a new subwoofer um, last month, so that was a lot of fun. A wireless sub, which is which is um, and it sounds amazing. So anyway, just a little plug there. But um, um, most of most of what we're doing now that's going to cause any people to to kind of look over and and be like, whoa, that's that's cool. Is uh, is done in software. So many so many cool features and. So I guess I could give a little sneak peek. We have a um, we have a software release happening this coming Tuesday, and it's gonna be it's it's gonna um, it's called it, we're we're releasing just one feature with it um, for our fixed group for our home theater setups in Blue Sound. So that's pro pro products like the the sound bar and the power node and you know flex little flex speakers uh, for surrounds. Um, we're releasing a, a feature called stereo surround um and so it's it's basically like um we're, we're taking some proprietary tech that nad actually developed many many years ago called ears and we are we've implemented into blue os and so now um you know two channel sources stereo sources um will play will be mixed prop like really nicely naturally um into the ambient in, in, in an ambient way into the surrounds just for stereo sources. So um, kind of like the, the feature request really from our customers was, um, you know, when I'm not playing Dolby content, I still want to hear sound out of my surrounds. Um, and so this was kind of our, our way of doing it. So that's a little, a little tidbit, um, kind of a pre-launch, pre-announcement announcement for anyone who is listening. So you're first here. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, anything like that, any like new info that nobody else knows, I'm all into that. If you guys have got any uh, like dirt on any anything, I, well, that, that's all that's all open as well. I want to let our our uh, audience know that some of the questions we've been able to get to and some of them we just simply haven't. Um, I kind of do that on purpose, honestly, because I don't want to be rude to our guests and when we have a, a, a thought pattern going, we just kind of finish it. But if you've listened to these uh, these shows before, you know that we'll always go back between this group and we'll make sure that we scan every single one of the questions and make sure that you get you guys get answered. Um, so thank you for for asking questions. Um, that automatically throws you into the drawing for the node to I which uh, which uh, Lindbrook has so graciously uh, offered to to uh, to give to one of our lucky uh, our lucky listeners and then we're gonna we're gonna enhance that by giving you a year's worth of cobas uh, for free so guys thank you so much for uh, for for uh, 
uh, offering to do that. That was that was incredibly nice. But and, and I know we've already been over an hour. I told you guys it's probably going to be a solid hour and a half. Uh, but I'm just not going to cut us off, and we're kind of in the middle of the things. And plus, if if nobody else uh, uh, listens, if everybody kind of drops off. Uh, we'll do what we did yesterday and have another two or three year uh, conversation, but <laughs> uh, two or three hour conversation. But but there's a couple of things that we haven't mentioned that's not necessarily about product, which I do want people to know about what you guys are doing because I think that most everything that you're doing is completely relevant to the industry, and we are super proud to have you guys as partners. But you guys are doing other things. You're not just uh, you know, 100% into uh, NAD or Blue Sound. Um, you guys really kind of dive into the music world as well, and you're, I think you're you're fairly close with with uh, a buddy of ours, Neil Young. That's Stephen, right. why don't you uh, why don't you give us a little well, rundown of what you guys are doing with? Uh, but I'll, I'll just tee it up by saying that Neil Young, uh, as an artist, has long been. Uh, a vocal advocate for better sound quality, and uh, as many many of you know, that he uh, launched a uh, project a number of years ago to bring high resolution audio players to the market. Uh, we uh, have in, uh, have engaged in a relationship with Neil Young Archives, and for the past few months, we've been. Uh, offering Neil Young Archives as one of the music services that you can dial up when you buy a Blue Sound or an NAD piece with Blue Oss. And we recently expanded that relationship. Uh, and I'm gonna turn it over to Greg, who is more instrumental in actually putting that deal together than I. Yeah, so, um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's an interesting story because like you say, Neil Young has always been a, a, an advocate for high res music and, um, He's really been uh, uh, quite upset about the way the music industry handles music because uh, they don't always honor it in the way that uh, the fans do and that uh, and that really upset Neil. And, you know, you listen to his music and, you know, he would say, this is nothing like what I made in the studio. You know, this they, they ruined it. How could they do that to my music? And uh, so he has... Uh, been able to stream his own music on his own website. And by the way, his website has all kinds of other stuff. He's got a, a newspaper called The Contrarian. And uh, But we, we got together with Neil because he's Canadian. We're a Canadian company. He's into high res. We're into high res. And uh, it, it's been a lot of fun to, uh, to get closer and to see the way he's used the medium in a very unique way. Uh, I mean, all his music is on Cobuzz as well. But you know, on the archives, I think there's probably stuff. If you're a real Neil Young fan, there's stuff that has never been released. You know, lots of old stuff. And he's just been doing his, uh, he just did a big 10 CD set as well, the volume two of his archives. So, and he's doing movies and, you know, he's just still going strong at 70 something years old. So here's what, here's what I really oh, like. Here's what I really, really like about Neil. Um, I was so, I, I was so following this whole Pono thing and just high resolution players in general. And if you look at Pono and you really look at the history and, and what was going on at the time, um, it was really just, you know, a couple of years behind its time. Uh, yeah, had that product been been released two years before it was released, it would have been madly successful. Uh, but at that time, just about the second it was released, streaming was really starting to 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 catch, and it didn't have you couldn't stream on it. And I, I looked at that product when it came out. I haven't bought one. I I, I didn't buy one because I. I thought I really needed it because I really did. And I really bought it to, to support Neil and what he was trying to do around high resolution. You guys saw some of the uh, videos that he did with yeah, you know, just ton dozens and dozens of top artists that walk out of these demos going, oh, my God, I've never heard anything like this. I want my stuff like this. Neil was like, he is so at the cutting edge. But what I respect about the man uh, more than the product that he made was when the product 
actually the Pono product, which sort of looked like a tablon uh, uh, Toblerone, Toblerone, yeah. Toblerone, right? Is the season uh, candy thing that I don't know who the industrial designer was on that thing, but I want to shoot him. Um, it, it just didn't have the everything that it needed. But even though it sounded wasn't awesome. really, sounded it wasn't awesome. written. I'm There's sorry. In it. it sounded really good. The it sounded fantastic. I've still yeah, the air it acoustics through the DAC in it. It was really nicely done. But uh, yeah, oh yeah, there's a big story behind that too. That's a lot of fun, but we won't get into that. Uh, the thing that I really dug about Neil was even after that product didn't really hit the way that he would have liked it to, or, or really even the industry, including me, would have liked it to. Um, he never stopped with 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 full or high resolution uh, advocacy he's always been behind it and even though he's not really making it right now uh with that particular product uh neil is still one of the biggest adv uh, advocates of, of high resolution which tells me that the guy is a real person with a real purpose and that real purpose is for people to be listening to music the way that that it was recorded that he really wanted to hear it and if you've ever listened to any neil young albums back from 1971 when records a lot of times didn't sound very good uh take a gander at uh live at massey hall i think that was recorded yeah, in 1971 one, and i gotta tell you it's still just thinking about that recording brings cold chills uh, to my spine. So he's always been into it, but it's not just something from a marketing standpoint. Neil just believes in it from a, um, from a, from a real person perspective, from a audible perspective, which I'm Massey, really Massey really Hall's in our, you know, Massey Hall's our hometown basically. So I'm, I'm yeah. literally sitting just down the street from it. It's pretty cool. You're in, you're in Toronto. Yeah. Oh my God. I let me tell you, that is one venue I have not been to. I, and I am dying to go. I cannot wait till this whole COVID thing. It's pretty thing's cool. Over. It's, it's actually it's getting um, renoed right now, completely redone, and and I that's think that's almost it's a, a little scary because I know, I know, I know. I think I, you know, I think there's they're they're trying to stay true to form, you know. So, but I, I hope I hope they don't wreck it. It's it's classic and legendary. Well, I think it's really neat that you guys are involved with so many cool projects around around music uh certainly at cobuzz we value you as a as a partner but i'm quite sure title does as well um nad has been uh, a, a, a instrumental in a lot of uh live performances we we can't do that right now but wow how innovative and when i when i heard you guys were 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 doing this and and, and looking at these kinds of I think, I think David Cross. Who's hosting As, now? David's power line adapter just died. <laughs> yeah. He'll be back. Well, we should pick up the thread here. Um, yeah. now, live music is something that we really love. And well, we have done some live concerts with MQA. Um, That's right. And something I wanted to pick up on that was mentioned was the fact that um, uh, we do a lot of upgrades through software. These products we're making today, uh, a lot of the features are defined in the software, and we can upgrade them over the Internet. So Matt mentioned that there's a new surround music system coming. Um, we also did uh, MQA when that came out. We were able to uh, uh, give that to all of our uh, people around the world. Neil Young Archives uses a unique um, uh, codec for its, uh, its transmission. And uh, we have implemented that in everybody's player. You don't even know you've got it, but it's in there now, uh, done through software. And part of that, we have to look ahead and say, well, well, how much memory will we need? How powerful a processor will this require? And we really overbuild uh, the products to allow for this kind of uh, forward development and, uh, and enhancement. And uh, so far, uh, I believe everything we have enhanced, we've been able to do free of charge uh, to all the people that buy Blue Sound. So uh, you could have bought one of our products in 2012 or 2013 and, uh, you know, it's 
it's upgraded to the, the very latest uh, technology. Uh, you right. know, Greg, that back when we could travel and I was going into the office, one of the things I loved about going into the office was seeing our, our QA lab, our quality assurance lab, because it has every single Blue OS device ever made, you know, Blue Sun Generation 1, Generation 2, 2i, all the NAD products, our third party partners like Dolly, and they're all right there. And they can do testing with our automation drivers or a new Kobos feature or title feature or whatever service you, you may have, but uh, it's always but a little bit automation because that's another thing that we do that most streamers don't. Uh, we can integrate with all of the smart home systems. Uh, we can do voice from, uh, from Google and from, uh, from Amazon Alexa. with Alexa. So uh, you can control your blue sound using voice commands. Uh, if you have an Alexa device, for example, uh, it can talk to uh, talks through the cloud actually, and comes back down into the Blue Sound device. And uh, uh, so that's, or if you've got a whole house system with automated lighting and shades and all of that, uh, we can uh, we make apps that work on on those controllers as well. So it's uh, we really look at the complete picture and how people want to use our products, and we try to uh, accommodate every every reasonable uh, uh, use case. You know, speaking, speaking about control, uh, if you don't have an automation system, one of the things we mentioned earlier on the call was uh, IR control. You know, you held up that remote control with the M33 and Steven's got some product behind him over his shoulder there. But one of the things that I know I like is when I build a playlist, you know, if I, if I don't really know what artist I want to listen to or I, I kind of have a general idea of what I want to do, but I'm not sure. I can build a playlist and then recall that, recall that Kobos playlist with a simple IR command. Like Steven's got the remote right there. You, you, you can just hit one on the remote control and we have a preset feature and that preset feature can just simply recall those playlists instantly without ever opening your phone. You can leave your phone locked, charging on the nightstand and then recall those playlists super, super easily. You can also integrate it with your television, whether you're using our sound bar, the Pulse sound bar, or now the, uh, the the latest version of the um, of the uh, power node also has a uh, an e arc input. So mm -hmm. if you've got a modern TV with a HDMI arc function, uh, you can put it right in, and that whole your music system now gets controlled by the TV when you turn the TV on, and it's all seamless and uh, and automatic. It's it's just fabulous. I, I want to put in a plug for the sound quality of our pulse speakers that are part of the blue sound line uh many of you who are watching probably have heard of paul barton uh, he's the p and the b of psb uh and uh a design he's a, one of the most renowned speaker designers in the world and we're lucky to have him and his company as part of the lenbrook uh enterprise paul has been the guy who's voiced and design all the blue sound speakers so when uh people compare our blue sound pulse uh, pulse mini uh, pulse flex uh products to those from other competitors where they seem surprised that our products really do sound extraordinary uh and there's a really good reason they've been designed by somebody who really has a, a almost a 50-year uh legacy of making state-of-the-art loudspeakers. So we're very really? proud of the way that our products It's sell. really about the approach, wouldn't you say, Stephen? Just Absolutely. in general, for everything that we do on the NAD, Blue Sound, PSB side, it's a it's an approach thing. Right. Uh, I, I am fortunate enough to have a pair of Pumas, uh T3s in my living room, which are extraordinary and always been one of the top-ranked speakers from uh, Stereophile and other uh, high end magazines. And the fact that he's designed the Pulse 2i and the Pulse Mini, the Pulse Flex and the Sound Bar and the Pulse Sun Plus, just, you know, it's another feather in our cap for people who are looking for an amplified listening experience. We've got a question there from Giles. Greg, do you want to talk to that question a little bit? Sure. I see uh, Giles uh, has uh, asked if he would like to. Uh, uh, listen to Kobuz on a Lenbrook device in a multi-channel environment, what would be the best product to use? And um, 
you know, it, it using our pulse speakers, you can create a, uh, a multi-channel wireless system uh, using two of the flexes, which are a little, uh, very small speaker uh, for the rear channels. And you can use our sound bar or you can use our power node uh, with a pair of speakers you might already have for the front stage. And you can play Dolby Surround and uh, starting uh, Tuesday, you'll also be able to listen to your music and Surround. I think, yeah, I think that uh, question is specifically um, answered by that feature that's coming on, on Tuesday because yeah. it's, you want to listen to yeah, some yeah, music and yeah, yeah, content on Cobas in a multi-channel environment? That's exactly yeah. what that's for. Yeah, and with NAD, the M10 uh, will function that way as well, and as well as the M33. They also have the HDMI uh, arc inputs on them. Alternatively, you could do a home theater receiver, mm -hmm. and you could do um, you could do a home theater receiver. You know, one of our our, our M17 or, or T778 uh, NAD home theater receivers, and and accomplish some similar goals. And they you they have blue wireless, built in, right? They have blue yeah, watts built in. Yeah, with blue, with blue sound built in, blue OS built in. That, that's exactly right. We, we've got two two receivers and a home theater preamp processor with built in blue sound technology. Yep. David, we solved all the world's problems while you were uh, while you were out. I'm so glad. You lose power. We, I, I, my whole network is down. So this is all on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is all on. Just on your hotspot, and I apologize for the uh, the weird look. <laughs> no, it's okay. You're still blue. We we planned it this way. We wanted to have more guests so that as one fell off, we could just pick up you know where we left off. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just trying to get this thing situated right now because if no you've been in a situation like this, I'm just kind of freaking out a little bit. <laughs> it's actually, someone someone asked earlier in the chat um, where the name Blue Sound came from. And uh, and your David, your 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 screen is reminding me of like of, of really where that that did come from, which was <laughs> the question: What's the color of live music? Because you know, really, when you go to a show, like the general tone tends to be kind of what we're seeing on David's screen right now, and uh, and uh, blue, like so, and and we're we're very much about reproducing sound, you know, as as the artist intend intended, and or you know, in as close to live that live feeling as possible, and so um, that's that's really where the the blue came from in blue sound. I did well, not. To honor you guys, I decided to make everything super blue and uh, yeah. And now my mood. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. You're a little quiet, but we can we can still hear you. Yeah, sorry about that. You know, my big professional setup is down right now. So after the uh, after the live stream, we will get on that and uh, figure out what's going on. But uh, listen, guys, it's already like five thirty. So I. I think it's about time to end this anyway. I apologize for the technical difficulties. No worries. <laughs> we, uh, I, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to talk to everybody and chat a little bit and have some fun. And uh, uh, it's, it's greatly appreciated. Thanks. Everyone, if you're not familiar with these guys, please go visit them at their website. I think Nita probably has already put it up. But uh, is it... Uh, NAD.com or Blue electronics, NAD electronics.com and bluesound.com. NAD electronics.com or bluesound.com. Please be sure to go visit these guys, uh, check them out. And if you haven't tried out a Blue Sound player, uh, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, There's some other things that I wanted to get into. So, guys, would you, would you, uh, would you like to come back, uh, maybe in a yeah months and we can we can figure this we can um uh talk about some other things and where you're going and get mad time, david love we, we love the support you give us and uh we love cobas we do we were doing cobas before it was in the u.s so you were doing, or you were doing cold cobas before it was cool weren't you that's, that's right. right no it was always cool it just wasn't always available in the u.s it was european to start with so Thank you guys very much. Thank for, you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Talking to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.